Oh, it's a bit upsetting at the end, isn't it? Hello, welcome to What the Flick. Christy Lemire, Tim Grissom's hanging out with us, Alonzo Duraldi. We're talking about Amy, the Amy Winehouse documentary. It came out in New York and L.A. last weekend, and it goes wider this weekend, so we wanted to talk about it. Alonzo, please tell us about it. So, yeah, it's a portrait of the uh, the, the fast rise and ultimate uh, sad demise of Amy Winehouse from a uh, teen girl who liked to sing jazz with the, the like National Youth Orchestra to... Signing with a label and uh, being introduced to drugs and having a life where, you know, fame was not good. And uh, it's, it's a sad story, but a reminder of what a potent artist she was. Take a look. She was highly intelligent, the most intelligent person I knew. She was so utterly authentic. Amy, just give us a smile and then we can turn the camera off. Do you promise? <laughs> she had such an emotional relationship to music. You're becoming an artist in the public eye. The more people see of me, the more they'll realise that all I'm good for is making music. And the Grammy goes to Amy Winehouse. She was one of the truest artists I ever heard. The world wanted a piece of her. Amy was a girl that just wanted to be loved. So I fell in love with someone who I would have died for. And that's like a real drug, isn't it? This is someone who is trying to disappear. So what's interesting about this is how it is structured. Asif Kapadia, who also did Senna. Yeah, a movie I did not love. But, but this uh, is structured similarly in that it's very impressionistic. And yeah. it, it kind of comes at you in wisps. And it's not structured with, like, talking head clip, talking head yeah, clip. There are like, no talking heads no in this talking movie. It's all, all. it's all, like, voiceover over either uh, uh, vintage footage or sort of... I think the only new footage you shot probably were, were like sort of establishing shots of mm -hmm. certain areas of London or whatever. Right, right, and he got new interviews, but he used the audio of those over existing photos and, and video, and um, so it sort of comes at you in these in these waves, this kind of hypnotic waves of information. But it's also just so devastating. You know, she, she happened to have grown up in a time where everybody had a camera, right? right. The technology was cheap and it was everywhere, and and so you've got a lot more early footage of her than you might of another artist from even a decade previously. So it's, yeah, no, uh, it's very some, enlightening. Some, somebody I know is, uh, has a documentary about uh, a sort of a 60s, 70s British rock figure and was having a hard time breaking up the talking heads. And and yeah, I, I, you know, I remember when Tarnation came out. That was sort of the first movie that I'd seen where it was like, oh yeah, here's somebody who's been filming themselves the, mm -hmm. their entire lives, but mm -hmm. that's everybody now, you know? I think documentaries from here on out are mm -hmm. gonna be, you know, used to be sort of like, oh, if we, if we were lucky, we had Super 8 home movie footage, but now <laughs> it's just like, no, it's on my phone, here we go. You but know. the never before seen stuff is really, really illuminating, because I mean, I think probably most of us had not seen her at age 13, 14, yeah. when it's singing happy birthday to a, a friend, <laughs> and even then you see the flourishes and, and the, the personality and the style that was, was very much her own, and then to see her personal style evolve mm -hmm. to become like the tats and the eyeliner and, and the bouffant. That's interesting too. But it's um, it's just so heartbreaking because over and over again, people she trusted just completely used her and Let abandoned her, down, her yeah. and, and did not have her best interest at heart. I mean, there's, there's the, I heard rehab in the car on the way over here today. And you know, there's that horrible sad line in, which now seems sad, in the chorus, my daddy thinks I'm fine. Yeah. Because her dad, her dad comes off like one of the most Ugh. horribly villainous figures here. Didn't send her to rehab what she needed. Kept her out on the road because she was making money. Yeah. But had abandoned her previously for some other woman, and now comes back all of a sudden when she's famous. Well, yeah, the, 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 so the things that bug me about the movie, I mean, I, I think most of it's great, and I, I found it very very powerful and very moving. There is some bridging material I would have loved to have seen, like, okay, the dad abandons the family to go marry this other woman, and then he's back when she's famous. Like, what was that transition mm -hmm. like? When did he just glom on? Did she welcome it, you know? Um, you know, she's with Blake Fielder, Civil, for a while, but they're, they, they, when they met, they were both seeing other people. He eventually dumps her for the girl that he had already been with, and, and Amy is devastated by it. 
and then Amy becomes famous, and then he's back. Well, the and I'm like, well, how did that happen? Also, you know? the thing that made her famous was the album that she made inspired by how he destroyed her. Right. I mean, Back to Black, all those lyrics are about how he broke her heart, you yeah. know? And then it made her a superstar, and then he, he came he's back, back. And now it's okay, now they're all kissy face in public. Right, right. but the now movie okay. never tells us, like, well, did he only come back because she was famous? Was there something else going on? I mean, because the implication, obviously, is that, yeah, the the, the the, the the husband and the father are both like horrible, and they were mainly they're the ones to blame for her demise. But I would be more. I'd like to have the full story there mm -hmm. before I completely damn them in that regard. Yeah. Well, that's the question I have real fast. I haven't seen Amy yet, but mm -hmm. I'm curious for is the movie more about for people who know her story already? No, I didn't know much yeah. actually, I didn't and because I, I I don't follow the young people's music. Um, <laughs> no, I didn't. I, I didn't exactly. <laughs> Get off my lawn! I didn't know a lot of the. I, I knew some of the hits and stuff, but yeah. I didn't really know the the full story. And I felt like it, it did fill me in. And there's just heartbreaking stuff. I mean, like where the mother talks about how. Amy came to her as a teenager and basically admitted to being bulimic. Mm -hmm. But she said, oh, I have this great diet. I, I eat whatever I want and then I throw it up. And neither the mother, and she told the mother and the father this, and neither of them really sort of knew how to respond to that or, or, or that they should respond to that. And so she was bulimic her entire life, which was part of what screwed her health up, you know, what, why her, her heart was so weak. Um, so, I mean, there's just, it, weirdly enough, I found myself thinking about Valley of the Dolls a lot. I kept thinking, like, <laughs> you know. As we, we always go back to Valley of the Dolls exactly. eventually, right? But no, I mean, we, you think of that movie as being sort of cartoony and ridiculous, but like th these trajectories exist, you know, where you have this young singer, super full of talent, and then, you know, like becomes uh, addicted to chemicals and becomes, you know, has these body issues and has these men in her life that exploit her. Uh, and you know, and and and, and it, it, it sends them to ruin. And here's an example of this shit happens. It seems you know? like it happened really, really quickly with her, like over the course of, of less than a decade. Yeah. Right? Because she she begins recording at like 19, I want to say. Yeah. yeah. And she died at 27. She burned. That was very quick. bright, and then was like. That was quick at that magical age of, of 27, which is so uh, so eerie and so horrific. Mm. What Janis Joplin, Kurt Cobain, Kurt, Jimi Hendrix, Jim Morrison. Jim Morrison. Yeah. They're all 27 yeah. anyway. So uh, it's 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 really sad but also there's, there's one moment toward the end that I thought was so hopeful that I, it, it broke my heart more than anything else maybe that when at the Grammys mm. right so she's in London for the Grammys but she holds her own party to, to celebrate and everyone's around her and when she she's won so much that night when, when Tony Bennett comes out and and gives the award for for it was a record of the year yeah and rehab wins and she's standing there and he, she hears Tony Bennett say her name, and you get the sense that she's giddy because Tony Bennett has said her name, <laughs> you know, like her idol. And the Grammy goes to Amy Winehouse. <laughs> and there's like this, a girlish kind of innocent exuberance in that moment that it's like, oh God, she still loves this. She's still a fan. But then you know? but then her best friend gives the interview about it. She goes, I was in the audience and I was crying and Amy saw me and she pulled me up on stage and we went backstage and I said, oh, this is so wonderful. And Amy said, uh, this sucks without drugs. Right. Winning five Grammys right. sucked because right. she was not high. Right. It's so like, it's, oh, it's, fuck, you and, know. And this movie's got a lot of that, of like highs and lows, which I guess is relevant given how much she was addicted to everything. So yeah, it's, it's really, really sad, um, but also a great reminder and a, a, a new perspective on her talent. So um, what is your number? I, I give it an eight. I thought it was really engaging. I just, like I said, there was there were some sort of documentary pieces mm -hmm. that I felt were missing. Uh, but it's an amazing story, and it's told beautifully, and and it's uh, you know it's a bummer. Yeah, I say eight and a half, and so our number is eight point three. It's like in the low nineties somewhere in Tomato Land. So yeah, it, it's out everywhere this Friday. So please go try and find it if you get a chance.